Would you like to create an insert for your clear mobile phone case? In this video, I will show you how to create a template and I will also show you how I created this insert from start to finish. The first step for both methods is to measure the case, the length and the width. My case is 14 centimeters long and 6.7 centimeters wide. Some cases might be more tricky to measure. My case is quite easy as it has those black edges, so I have a little bit of wiggle room. Let's start with the first method without a printer. What you will need is a printer paper or some kind of a thin paper. You will also need scissors if you have a paper trimmer and a pencil and a ruler. By the way, both methods are for any type of case. The first step is to cut a rectangle using your measurements. I used a paper trimmer for that, but you can use scissors. I'm using here a paper that I took from a notebook. To get a printer paper, I would have to stand up and I was too lazy. You can use other paper, but I found it's better to use a thinner paper at first, nothing expensive, simply because it's more see-through. Plus, if I mess up, I can try again without feeling I'm wasting paper. Here is the rectangle that I cut. Let's put it inside of the case. And as you can see, it fits perfectly. I guess most mobile phones and cases have rounded edges, so it's a good idea to round those corners. I have a corner rounder, which has the perfect radius. I think that's the correct term for it, but you can use scissors if you don't have it. Or depending what kind of case you have, you can cut the corners straight. I rounded the corners on three sides. I didn't need to round the one where the camera is as that I will be cutting out later. If you have a camera in the middle, you can round all four corners. The next step is to cut out the opening for the camera. This is the most tricky part, but you only need to do this one time. Once you figure out the measurements and especially the cutout for the camera, you are sorted until you buy your next phone. Just have patience, measure smaller, you can always cut more. So I flip the case and I place the template on the outside of the case. I made sure it's correctly lined up and to avoid shifting of the paper, I secured it with a washi tape. Then I flip the case again and I trace the opening for the camera, placing the tip of my pencil as far as I could underneath the camera opening, so I can get a wider outline. Next, I cut out the opening for the camera using my scissors. This is very simple for the cameras that are in a corner. If you have a camera in the middle, start with a cut in the middle and cut around that way. And after I was done, I placed it into my case, checking how it looks. It was still a little bit too big, so I used a pencil to mark where I need to cut. Here, the more see-through paper is very useful. I just lift up my case, which made it a little bit easier to see where I need to draw. And then again, I cut it with my scissors. As I said, it's always good to cut less at the beginning. You can always cut more than the other way around. And because this is a cheaper paper, if it doesn't work out the first time, just try it again. I place the template back into my case and it fits perfectly. And the template for the insert is done. You're good to go to create your actual insert. As I said, I tried another method creating this insert. Here you need a printer and probably a little bit of luck finding your outline. I went to Google and I typed the name of my phone and the words case outline. So iPhone XS case outline. There are some websites that give you the outlines, but none of them fit my phone case. I just went to Google images and I was lucky to find the exact outline I needed. To make sure it's correct size, I copied it to a Word document. You can use other programs, but I thought a Word document is something everyone has access to. I use Pages on Mac, but you can use Google Docs, Microsoft Office, and so on. Next, I cropped the image to only have the outline visible. In Pages, and I checked in Google Docs, you just click twice on the image, and then you can crop it and press Enter once you're done. 
but if you don't know how to do that in other software, it's okay. As long as the outline is there, it doesn't matter if you print the whole image. Next, if you were able to crop it, crop it very tightly. This way you can adjust the measurements of your image as it is. To adjust the measurements, make sure you select the picture. In pages under arrange, there is a size field where you can insert your numbers. You might need to uncheck the constraint proportions field to get your exact measurement. In other apps, there should be some similar field. But if you are unable to crop, you can insert a shape, a square, and align it with the outline on the picture and change the measurements that way. Once you are done, delete the rectangle, print it out, cut it out, and there is your template. So that's how you make a template for the insert. If you would like to have more durable template, you can always create it afterwards using the printer paper template, but I just use the actual insert that I previously created as my template for the next one. Whatever you decide to do, now you are ready to create your insert. You can use stamps and color, you can use distress inks or other inks to create a background, you can use a pattern paper, print out a background or a photo. Or you can do what I did and paint your own background. So let me show you how I painted this insert for my clear case where I painted overlapping leaves. In the future I will be making these mainly as vertical videos, but for this video I wanted to show you the full process. Depending on what you do with the background, it might be better to start with a bigger cardstock and cut it into the insert afterwards. If you are doing one focal point like a flower, you can cut it right away. I'm using here watercolors and I will be doing a little bit of wet on wet technique, so I taped my cardstock to a board using a washi tape to avoid warping. Because I'm going to be cutting the paper later, I used the template to make marks on each side to have a visual reference. I wish I did a full line because they were hard to see. I only needed to mark the width as the panel was the exact height I needed. I started with the wet on wet technique. The idea was to create a subtle blurry background. I mainly used green and yellow, but to some places I dropped a little bit of blue to add some additional color. I was adding more color and then I let the paint do its thing. After I was happy with the look, I let it fully dry. First I let it dry by itself, but then I took my heat tool to speed up the drying process. I don't mind letting the piece air dry, I think it looks a little bit better, but it always depends how much time I have. To paint the leaves, I started with a stem. I like to use a long bristle brush, it just makes painting thin lines much easier, but if you don't have it, you can use the tip of your round brush. I'm using just one paint of green, I'm going to be layering four branches on top of each other or more like overlapping each other, each darker than the previous one. So I started with the lightest shade. I used a scrap of paper to make sure I have the right mixture of water and paint, mainly because I didn't use a palette to mix my color. There is a little well in the paint and I just used that. While I'm talking about my painting process, I will speed up the video a bit because it took me quite a while and I'm pretty much doing the same on each leaf. And I think it's quite straightforward. But if you want to have it slower, let me know in the comments. After I painted the stem, I painted the leaves on each side of the line. Sometimes I find it easier to paint the leaves when I flip the paper, so I did that most of the times. Also I used a piece where I swatched the paints as a guide where the edges of the inserts are, since I could not really see my markings. Once I was done with the first branch, I painted the second and then the third and the fourth, all overlapping each other intensifying the color with each branch. Actually, I was originally planning to paint only three, but in the end I decided to paint one more. I thought there was just something missing. I'm using here the Gonzai Tambi watercolors from Kuretake. I really love the palette. There are so many colors, which is perfect for me because I really don't like mixing colors. 
I actually had these paints since 2016 and I still didn't need to rebuy any of the colors. Of course, the pants are much bigger than the typical paints, but I paint with them a lot. This is my main palette. And I recently learned that these Japanese Gansai paints are not made the same way as watercolors from Europe or America. Apparently, they use different binding and when using them, I do feel that they are different. I really cannot describe it. I just feel they feel different. They feel a little bit rubbery. It's nothing bad. I still like them, but it's just different. So I decided, since I'm learning watercoloring, that in the future for paintings like these, where I'm painting from scratch, so no stamps, I will use more my Winsor & Newton watercolors and use the Gansai Tambi mainly with stamps. Of course, it depends on the project and the colors I need. I still love the Gansai Tambi colors. I just want to use the Winsor & Newton more, but I only have a small palette. Anyway, it's just a little boring idea that I have for the future, using Western watercolors and painting more. There is still a little bit of painting to be done, so I will play some music and be back once I'm done. So the leaves are done. I could not leave it without adding a splatter. I used the same colors I used for the background layer and I splattered the color over the leaves. I let it dry and now I'm ready to cut my insert. First, I used my paper trimmer and cut the panel to the size I needed. I only needed to trim the size as the height of the panel was already the correct size. Next, I used the corner rounder and rounded the corners on three sides. And lastly, I used my template to outline the opening for the camera. I placed the template over my insert. Then I used the pencil to draw the outline. And lastly, using my scissors, I cut out the opening. Technically, you need the template mainly for the opening of the camera. For the rest, you can use a ruler and paper trimmer or scissors. I thought I can just use the cutout for the camera for the next project but I had a hard time aligning it. With a full template, it's much easier. All right, the insert is done. Let's put it inside of my case and it fits perfectly. And I also love the leaves. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and will give it a try. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask and follow my YouTube shorts where I will post future ideas for these inserts. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video very soon.